Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Deborah Byrne from Deborah Byrne Psychology Services, known as DB Psychology across social media. So today I'm going to talk about this week's blog, which is all about journaling for mental health. It's also journaling for physical health. Um, because we know from studies that uh, keeping a journal, like our ancestors did, they, they did the Dear Diary, um, they had the right idea. They actually had a, a brilliant idea in, um, in keeping those journals and those diaries because it benefited not only their physical health. Um, so we're talking about, um, you know, asthma, um, improving your immunity, um, arthritis, all sorts of things physically can be, be can be aided um, because we're basically reducing our stress levels. And that's what it's a wonderful stress management tool. It, it, it is a wonderful uh, tool for depression or anxiety. Uh, for improving cognitive function. Um, there are so many things that it can actually help and benefit with. So it's one of the basic self-care daily tools that I always promote to, uh, to anybody. Um, I use it myself and anything in my basic self-care, uh, the book that I have written and anything else, I always try. I, I use those myself. I'm not, I'm not going to recommend anything to anybody that I haven't tried myself. So in saying that, why should you journal? Um, well, it can help you clarify your thoughts and feelings. Um, it can help you get to know yourself better. It can help you um, build empathy with others in, that you're in a relationship with, whether it's work colleagues or family or friends um, or just somebody that you've gotten to know and they've really annoyed you and you're wondering why these people are annoying you. So, you know, getting those thoughts down and out on paper. Uh, it can improve your your sleep. And as I said, it's a, it's a great way of de-stressing. Um, and it is also a way of helping you to improve communications, thus improving your relationships, because you're, you're getting all that information that you have in your head down on paper. You are, you know, you're, you're putting it down and you can and you can recall or rethink over what the argument was about or what the problem is about. So it's a very good problem solving tool. Um, you know, you can see it then when it's out on paper or you've recorded it. Don't forget, you can do this online. Um, there are online apps that you can use um, and get it out there. And then you can actually see it in a visual form. The thoughts in your head are actually down and you can see it in a visual form. So therefore, you can go back over it. So in that way, it's good for, um, you know, problem solving and maybe and productivity in business. So, um it can also increase your creativity. And I've done a whole blog on that about, you know, how we need um, to get, you know, uh, our brain, the logical part of our brain to to cease for a while and to actually, you know, use our creative side of our brains in order to increase, again, productivity in business, problem solving, improving communication. All that is very, very important. So encouraging um, yourself um, to increase your cre creativity in any way, shape or form, including journaling, uh, is so highly beneficial to business and, as I said already, to uh, relationships, whatever those type of relationships are. Um, they're also a means of keeping a track of your mental health. So if you had a physical problem, um, you see them up. In fact, if you wanted to, um, you know, do better exercise or if you wanted to uh, diet, whatever you want to do, you see these uh, physical trackers. Um, well, a journal can be actually used as a mental health tracker. So you can record and look after anything to do with your mood. You can also, in terms of hormones, if you feel there was a hormone imbalance for women in particular, if you have a look at that. Um, and don't tell me guys don't get hormonal, they do. Um, so, you know, keeping an eye on all those things can have a benefit impact to your mental health. But also you're keeping a track for your GP or your doctor as well. So you can use your journal for that as well. So... Have a think about it. Um, as I said, the journal doesn't have to be on pen and paper. Um, for some people, you can't actually use pen and paper. It may be um, a case that you need to dictate your journal and that's okay. 
you can use an app. Anything at all that is getting those thoughts, feelings, um, all those problem solving things, anything you want to solve out of your head and down on paper is going to reduce your stress. It's going to help improve your sleep. And as I said, it's going to have a huge benefit. Um, and as I've listed, you know, to to um, mental and physical health. So, you know, journals are really, really great basic self-care tools. Now, does it matter how you do, how you, how you keep a journal? Um, no. In fact, I want you to leave your perfectionism, your, um, you know, your, you, we, we, when we write, even if we dictate, well, not so much when we dictate, but when we're writing, we can get a little bit perfectionist about how it's written, the style of our writing, uh, our spellings, particularly spellings and maybe punctuation are the two things that, that can catch us up. Let that go. OK, when you're journaling, you need to get into the flow of just getting the thoughts out. But so you set aside about 20 minutes and um, and why I say 20 minutes it's going to take you about five minutes to let go of those initial thoughts and initial apprehension and anything that might get in the way of what's going on underneath. So you just let the thoughts flow. So whatever comes out of your head, whatever's happening, whatever comes out through the pen, just let it in when you're dictating. In fact, whatever comes out, let it flow. It's that flow. Um, you know, t- 20 minutes is a good, uh, good uh, level to, to have. And at the end of the day is a good time as well before you go to bed. As I said, it's beneficial for sleep. So, you know, you're getting out all that to those to do lists. You're getting out all those um, what happened in the day, uh, any anger, any any emotions or any um, resentments or anything that you're going to procrastinate about. That's going to keep you awake at night. Get it all out on paper. It allows the doing part of the brain to say it's okay to switch off because what I need to remember is down on the paper and I'll come back to it. That's what it it allows that. So then the doing brain can switch off because that doing brain will keep going um, during the night if you don't let it switch off. Now, um, the other thing I'd say to you is um, pick a theme. Sometimes if you get stuck, I would say pick a theme and that's why I've included the self-care they're really self-awareness questions and there's about, I think, 31 of them. Um, so it's kind of 31 days to get you started into the routine of writing and writing about yourself. So if you're stuck for ideas or thoughts to write down or even to get yourself into the habit of writing um, or if you just want to reevaluate where you are right now in your life and what's going on in your life. Um, it's a good idea maybe to take those questions and start there. It's a good starting place. So that's why I've included them at the end. Um, a final uh, point I would like to say to you is always um, finish on a positive note. Um, the brain needs to be made more aware of the positive things we have in our lives. So finishing with at least three things you're grateful for. They can be the same things every night. They can be um, very simple things uh, like that you have a roof over your head or that your children are okay or whatever it is. Something very simple that, you know, you got through today. Today was okay. You got through today. Um, We need to highlight to our brain that to start, you know, that there are positive things already in our lives. It's not all negative, particularly if you've had a bad day um, and that you want to, you know, you want to become more aware of those positive things. That's what doing that does. Keeping those three things every night at the end, of, you know, at the end of the day, before you go to sleep, you're finishing on a positive note. Um, it allows the brain then to become more aware during the next day and the days to follow that there are other things in our lives that are positive. It's not all doom and gloom. So if you're trying to maintain a good mental health balance, um, you know, journaling and finishing on that positive note of three, three things you're grateful for um, is, you know, par should be part of your daily self-care just as much as having your shower, changing, you know, changing your bed, um, you're brushing your teeth, you know, think about all the things that you, you need to do. You know, that is part of a very basic self-care package. Um, and I have plenty of blogs up there if you want to check them out. So, you know, 
journaling should be. And I don't like using the word should, but it is important. It really is. I can't stress this, how important journaling is to have that journal. Make sure it's safe. If it's online, make sure it's online protected. You know, you have a password for it um, or keep it somewhere. And you, you know, that, you know, somebody's not going to be looking at it because then you can, you're not going to be hesitant about letting it so, you know, get it all out and get it down on paper and give your mind a break. So I'll leave it there this morning and thank you all for listening. Um, and I will see you all next week. Uh, good morning.